So now that we've covered what's in the case, let's talk about the basics of operation. First, I'd like to point out some of the various control buttons found on the thermal imager. Starting with the back, you have the navigation pad here with the center push button. Pressing the center button will call up the main menu, which you can then navigate with the pad moving left and right. To the left of the navigation pad is the image archive or playback button, which is used to open and review any saved images. To the right of the navigation pad is the back button that while in the menu system, you can back out of a selection to the main menu or go back to a live image. Now's a good time to note that the imager is also touchscreen driven. Just tap the three dots here on the bottom of the screen, which will bring up the main menu, which you can then navigate. This makes it easy to move around the menu system and adjust the various settings. Now, if you're wearing gloves, it'll likely be easier to stick with the navigation pad and the center push button. Having the correct date and time entered into your camera is important for proper documentation and record keeping. These values are tied to each data file when you save a thermal image and cannot be changed after saving. To set the date and time, navigate to the settings menu. Touch the bottom of the screen to bring up the main menu and select the settings icon using either the touch screen or the navigation pad. Go to device settings and pick language, time, and units. Here you can set the time zone, the time, and the date in your thermal imager. There's also an option for the date and time format, which allows you to match the time display for your particular region. It's here that you can also adjust the temperature units from Fahrenheit to Celsius and the distance values from feet to meters. And unlike the date and time, these values can be changed later in the software. The range covers an interval of temperatures that the detector is able to accurately measure without going into saturation. Depending on the model, some infrared cameras have multiple temperature ranges that can be utilized. You work within a range, and when saving an image, all of the temperature data in that particular range is captured. To see what ranges are available on your camera, once again, please refer to the data sheets available on the FLIR support website at support.flir.com. To set the range, navigate to the settings in the main menu. Here, select Camera Temperature Range. Pick the most appropriate range for your application and press the navigation pad button to select the range. Once entered, hitting the back button will then return you to live imaging mode. As with range, focus is another adjustment that must be made correctly before saving. You cannot change the clarity of the focus once you've captured a thermal image. There are two ways to adjust focus on this series of thermal imager. The first is with manual adjustment. Manually adjust the focus by turning the lens housing until the proper focus is obtained. The other way is with autofocus. Activate the autofocus by pressing the top trigger button on the front of the camera. For the autofocus to work properly, the target should have good thermal contrast, meaning there needs to be a distinct difference between warm and cool areas on the object. With targets that are more thermally uniform, where there's not much of an apparent temperature difference, it might be better to use the manual focus instead. There are four different image modes available with this series of camera. You can access these by either using the navigation pad or the touch screen capabilities. Open the main menu and select the image mode icon. Four options will appear. MSX, which stands for multispectral dynamic imaging, thermal only, picture-in-picture, picture, and digital camera, which displays just the visible light feed. Now, for those of you who are new, we recommend staying in the thermal-only mode for now, as this will help you better understand what's required for proper focus. You can also always change the image mode later in the software. Thermal tuning is the process of changing the size of the temperature scale in the camera, what's known as adjusting span and level in our certification classes. Adjusting this scale modifies the brightness and contrast of your thermal image. This allows you to highlight important areas of thermal detail. And by default, the camera is set to automatic adjustment mode. This will automatically set the scale based on the hottest and coldest objects in the frame. There may be times, however, when manual adjustment is required, especially if there are extraneously hot or cold objects within the field of view. To manually adjust the image, go to the main menu and select the temperature scale icon located here on the main screen. Pressing the center push button will display your two choices, automatic and manual. Selecting manual will allow you to customize the scale settings. 
Press the navigation pad left or right to pick either the top or bottom number on the temperature scale. The selected number will turn blue. At this point, pushing up or down on the navigation pad will change the value of the number. Bring the numbers closer together to narrow the span and increase contrast, or push them further apart to widen the span and decrease thermal contrast. While in manual mode, there's also a tap auto adjust option where you can automatically change the scale just by touching the image. When neither number is selected in manual mode, pushing the navigation pad up or down changes the level of the image. This leaves the difference between the numbers fixed, but changes the overall level of the span within the range of the camera. You can also use the touchscreen features of the thermal imager to make these adjustments. Tap the number you'd like to change and then use the slider located between the numbers and move the value up or down depending on what's needed to improve your thermal tuning. This series of camera also offers a number of different color palettes. Tap the bottom of the LCD screen or hit the center push button to bring up the color palette menu. This will open the menu where you'll find several different palettes that are available, plus several color alarm or isotherm settings. These include iron, rainbow, rainbow high contrast, white hot, black hot, arctic, and lava. Regardless of which color palette you select, you can always change these later either in the camera in the saved image or in the processing software. This thermal imager also offers several kinds of temperature measurement tools. These include a center spot meter, a hot spot box which provides the maximum temperature inside the displayed box, a cold temperature box with a minimum temperature value displayed, and two user preset options. For now, let's select the center spot, which displays the apparent temperature value in the upper left-hand corner here on your display screen. You can move the spot around the image by simply dragging it with your finger. Same with the hot and cold spot area boxes. You can also adjust the size and location of the box by dragging the corners outward or by touching the center of the box and moving it around the screen to different regions of the image. All of these tools are also available in the reporting software and can be modified in a saved image. Now if you're using a measurement tool, you also need to adjust the temperature measurement parameters. These include the values for emissivity, reflected temperature, relative humidity, air temperature, and atmospheric distance. All five of these parameters affect temperature measurement accuracy, especially emissivity and reflected temperature. As such, the values must be set correctly, and to know what those numbers are requires a level one infrared certification training at a minimum. To save an image with this series of camera, pull the main trigger located beneath the autofocus button here on the front of the imager. Now, a good tip to remember, try to remain as still as possible while doing so is any abrupt or excessive movement during saving may blur the thermal or digital photos as they're captured at the same time when pressing this button. Occasionally you'll notice that the live image freezes for a moment. A clicking sound can also be heard during this brief interruption and the word calibrating will appear at the top of the display. Now, this is normal and it's called the non-uniformity correction. Thermal energy from the surrounding environment or that that's generated inside the camera can actually affect the stability of the detector array. Now, this can impact the integrity of the temperature data that's displayed on the image, causing areas within the field of view to appear to be artificially warmer or cooler. You can force a correction by holding down the image recall button here on the back of the camera. The image will pause for a moment while a shutter, which acts as a uniform target, drops in front of the array. The detectors will then automatically reset and the camera will return to live imaging mode.